You know it is a big game when big game Dennis Dodd is there and when the host of the late kick Josh Pate is there. As we get right to the site, joining us from Waco, Josh, Dennis, you are there. Your reaction to how that game played out as Baylor hands Oklahoma its first loss of the season. Well, what were we saying when we came in here, Dennis? Uh, so we expect probably Caleb Williams to go about three quarters. Going to see Spencer Rattler <laughs> come in. Not going to matter. We're going to have this field stormed anyway. Look, you and I both picked Oklahoma to win this game. Uh, I can tell you my pick was precipitated on the fact that I expected a fast start. Once you got seven on the board at halftime for Oklahoma, obviously any result is in play. And it turns out that Dave Aranda and Baylor, they get that old signature win everyone wants. And afterwards, as you would expect, mayhem and chaos ensued here on the field. Yeah, we are human riot makers. <laughs> Everywhere we go, there are field stormings. What kind of man, what kind of coach calls timeout with three seconds left to kick a field goal? The kind of coach who has researched the Big 12 tiebreakers, number three in a three-way tie to either finish first or second and get into the championship game, is point differential. It's about a 500-word document. I just <laughs> got it from the Big 12. Somehow, Dave Aranda researched that. It will not go over well at Oklahoma. In fact, it'll be a point of contention all week. But the same coach and the same man who devised a defense that knocked out the hottest, best freshman quarterback in the country and limited Oklahoma until the final minutes to its worst offensive performance in seven years. Yeah, really interesting. After the game, by the way, Hakeem, obviously Dave Aranda asked about that. Dennis, I think he was asked. You, you asked him, as yeah. a matter of fact. You said, can you understand how there would maybe be some umbrance taken on the Oklahoma <laughs> side? And he said, yeah, I don't think they're happy about that. And that was it, Hakeem. He just shrugged his shoulders. Yeah, they're probably not happy about that. Dennis, big. In other words, who cares? You know, <laughs> this is football. Dennis, big picture, the college football playoff implications are what after this result? Well, not good for the Big 12. Um, they lose their best team for now mm -hmm. with the loss. Oklahoma is still ahead of Baylor and can win the Big 12. The question is, with a 13-point loss on the road like this, will you know can they win out and get back up? One of my takeaways is I don't think they beat Oklahoma State, right. but that's going to be determined. Um, Baylor is still in it. Oklahoma State's still in it. Uh, I, uh, Oklahoma controlled its own destiny for the Big 12, but not the playoff. I think we saw a conference drop out of the playoff race today. And, Hakeem, the other thing that we were talking about right here in pregame was the potential. We talked about it in the Big 10. Well, it also exists in the Big 12, the whole bumper car scenario. And the first of that domino effect probably happened here today. Now, look, if Oklahoma State runs the table, who in the world knows what they do? Ditto with Oklahoma. But equal or maybe greater in percentage likelihood right now is the concept that this whole conference is in the process of cannibalizing itself, at which point, yeah, you may very well have the Big 12 boxed out. Baylor handing Oklahoma its first loss this season, and the loss snaps a 17-game winning streak for Oklahoma. It was the longest active win streak in FBS. One of the guys that helped pull off this upset, Gary Bohannon, ran the ball nine times over 100 yards, two touchdowns, while running back Abram Smith rushed the ball 20 times for nearly 150 yards. This is a kid who converted to running back from linebacker. Dennis, you spoke to him post game. How impressive was he on this day? And I know he wanted to get in on that 75 yard run that came up short because I'm not saying a 100 yard run or a 90 yard run. I'm saying 75 yard run. Yeah. As as the game went on in the second half, I think there was a conscious effort by the offensive coaches to have him run the ball more because I've never seen him up close. He's a specimen. You can see why he was a linebacker. The guy can hit, and he said in the post game, I don't ever slide. I'm never going to slide. You can say that in college. You can't say that in the NFL. <laughs> you'll, you'll lose a lot. The coaches will go crazy. You can't say that in the NFL. But he was great today, and the more they ran him, the more Oklahoma had to account for him, and the more they couldn't. He was that plus-one quarterback that really Caleb Williams had become at Oklahoma, and they had him totally frustrated. He was looking at second and third reads. They did not get one explosive play in the passing game downfield, I don't think, something like 25 yards. And Oklahoma last year led the country in that category, and they were up near the top today in this category. I'm wandering around, but, yeah, Gary Bohanna was great. Yeah, Hakeem, by the way, just a beautiful, beautiful quote for you from Bohannon postgame. You can etch this one in stone. He said, sitting in his room Sunday after they lost to TCU, said, I decided right then and there I just needed to be the more violent player this week, and we needed to be the more violent team this week. And really, anytime football players use the word violent in postgame victorious press conferences, 
It just, I don't know, it does something to the hair on my arm. It just makes it stand up. I love it. The, the, the trucks out there are being violent right now to this post-game hit. What, what are we doing here? Uh, let's turn off the lawnmowers. <laughs> Yeah, that's like that's kind of the new saying, though, right? Like, I, I'm not hip with that. The, the kid woke up and chose violence. Like, that's what all the, the kids say nowadays, right, Josh? That's the, the new hip thing to, to say, and, and I guess that's what happened. Uh, meantime, unfortunately, Caleb Williams suffering a little bit of violence. He had his hand stepped on in the second quarter, Josh. How much did that affect him? Oh, I think it affected him. What I was left wondering on the field as you – steadily hear the chorus of chants build for Spencer Rattler from the same yes. student section and crowd that once upon a time, not, not more than a month ago, we were in the Cotton Bowl listening to that same crowd chant, get him out of here in a little more colorful language. Yeah, it affected him, Hakeem. I don't know how much it affected him, but it was very funny because, Dennis, when I found you on the field right after the game, you know, we were talking about how you could feel the script building. I mean, who would have ever expected not only Spencer Rattler to come back in this game, but him to lead a triumphant come? Nope, not going to happen. Not so much. And it just deflates. And so that's so weird because this week people were they were on this weird fence, Dennis, all week, and they have been all year with Caleb Williams. It's it's one side of the fence. This dude's going to go to New York City. And the other side of the fence is, well, but he could also be benched at any second because he is still a true freshman. Remember pregame that we talked about about to go up against a string of the best defensive coordinators and best defenses that he's seen. And uh, safe to say he was effective today. They uh, hit him. They confused him. Uh, Brandon Bronze again. That's what I was going to write about. You know, he didn't know where he was going with the ball. And then they got to him. There was a sequence in the third and fourth quarters where Oklahoma ran 17 plays, gained 26 yards through an interception. There were two penalties and a fumble in there, the, the one that uh, I think on third or fourth down where he recovered his own fumble and then got sacked. And that kind of summed up the Baylor defensive effort, that they completely smothered them, at least in the second half. It's the biggest fear, Hakeem, when coaches make these quarterback changes. Even though the rules don't say it has to be permanent, you really know from a psychological aspect, you don't want to backtrack on that. That's why they're so hesitant sometimes in doing it. And sure enough, Lincoln Riley pulled the string earlier this year in another game that we were talking to each other from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, OU, Texas. Well, now... Can anyone tell me what the quarterback situation is at Oklahoma moving forward? Because they still got meaningful football to play. The transfer portal is wide open. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's what uh, we'll see perhaps happen here. Baylor once again improves to uh, 6-0 and against the spread at home. Home sweet home as uh, they cover once again mm -hmm. as they win outright. They were getting points. They didn't even need them. Uh, big game Dennis Dodd, Josh Pate bringing down for us here on CBS Sports HQ. Men, thank you. And for more awesome content, check out The Late Kick with Josh Pate, delivering college football the way you want it, behind-the-scenes whispers and intel, thanks to a network of team insiders, game breakdowns, and rapid reaction. Join Josh three times a week on YouTube, 8 Eastern time. You can also listen to the podcast version as well, The Late Kick with Josh Pate. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.